Hello, everybody. It's Teresa with Open Food Network. This is part two of Tag. I'm just getting set up here. A reminder, if you go to the user guide and search tags and tag rules, you'll come to this page and you can follow along if you like. So just a reminder of what we're doing in these two webinars. Here's my to-do list. We're demonstrating the four things you can tag on. In webinar one, we tagged on a shop front, an order cycle. This is good if you want a members only shop or if you want a wholesale shop that only certain members see. So have a look at that if you haven't been there yet. There are three other things you can tag at, and I'm going to do all three of those in this video. I'm going to go a little bit more quickly than I did in webinar one. So if you get lost, start at the beginning. We're going to do three tags <clears throat> for different use cases. First, we're going to tag on a delivery method. For example, maybe we want no more online pickups, and we're going to charge for deliveries. But for my members or trusted customers, I'm going to waive that fee. So I need to create a delivery method to tag on a payment method. These days, with COVID-19, people are switching away from cash or check methods. So in my shop now, everybody is going to pay by credit card, which typically incurs credit card um, fees. Not fees for OFN, but gateway fees. And I charge that back to the customer. So everyone who pays by credit card is going to be charged 3.5% service fee. Well, I don't want to do that for my trusted members. I would like to waive the fee. So I need to tag a payment method that is credit card, but no fee for my customers. And the third situation, I'll describe tagging on products or variants. So in this scenario, a group of gleaners, not just the members now, members and non-members, so a different group, carrots at cost and process them for a food distribution system. So I need to be able to tag the gleaners, whoever they are, so that only they see that extra carrot cost. So three tags and that's what we're going to do. As you can see, Poor internet. I hope I didn't lose you. Okay. Let's start this time right in with the tag rules. Again, there's three things we do. Tag rules, customers, and then whichever of these things we're tagging on. Products, order cycles, shipping methods, payment methods. Let's do it this way where we start on tag rules first. So these are our existing tag rules that we did in um, webinar one. This is tagging all of my members who I tagged in my customer list to see a members only shop um, that has some special prices and some membership discount, et cetera. For these members, there's two other tags that I want to do. Um, one of them, I want to tag that delivery method. So, we have to create a new tag rule. And remember, the tables always follow the same pattern. The first thing is you make the thing not visible to anyone. And then you say who it's going to be visible to and what's going to be visible. So here's a new tag rule. Let's start with shipping methods. So by default, shipping methods tagged free shipping are not visible. But for customers tagged members, I have to add a new rule. Shipping methods tagged free shipping are visible. And that's my new rule. So by default, shipping methods tagged free shipping are not visible, so no one can see them. But for those customers who are tagged as members, and this was already here because they're already tagged. Shipping methods tagged free shipping, it matches this, are visible. I need to add a second rule, this time for the payment methods. So 
So payment methods tag, let's just call it free payment, are not visible. For customers tagged members, I need to add a new rule. Payment methods tagged free payment are visible. So those are my two rules. I'm going to stop there. We'll hold the products one till the end because it's going to be a little bit different because it's going to apply to a different customer group, not just my members. But these are now all the tags that apply to members. So we've set up the tag rules. Second thing is to set up is to update. This is very important. You can mess yourself up many times. I'm just showing you that we have already tagged my members. Well, I just tagged one of them. You could tag them. As shipping and payment. Set up the rule we tag shipping and payment methods. We now have shipping and payment methods to replace the tag. So back to our profile. And here's where shipping and payments are. They're on your profile screen. So let's start with shipping. You see I have two shipping methods set up right now. Delivery for KW and delivery in KW free for members. If you look at them, you'll see that this one, which is the public one, has a $5 fee that's being added on. That's what I don't want. So because I don't want that for members, I created a second parallel shipping method, delivery in KW. I put this here so I can tell which is which. And on this one, we want to add the tag and you do that here. Because you can see, this one has no fee attached. So this is going to say free shipping because it'll match the free shipping I set up in the tag rule. Okay, we're going to go back and do the very same thing around payment method. Make sure I update. So in payment method, again, I have the same thing, two payment methods, one credit card via Stripe, second credit card for, for members. So if we look at the via Stripe and ignore this, this is an error just because this isn't really a Stripe account set up. This Stripe account for my public shop, non-members, is going to incur a 3.5% charge. We're gonna leave that, but on the other method, the one for members, I'm going to tag it, same place where you tag the shipping, as free payment. Because you can see here, I've removed the payment. Now you know that I typed that correctly because it's showing this white on black, uh, white on blue like that. If, if it showed as black on um, blue, black print, you know that you haven't completed the tag. So I completed the three steps of tagging for both shipping and payment methods. Now, right now, the login I'm using is for a non-member. It's for a public person. So when I go to the store, You can see I only see the public store, not the member store, as it should be. And if I just go to check out, I wanted to show you, I'm gonna to get to the carrots. You can see that right now in the public store, these carrots are showing up. We're, we're gonna get rid of that with the next tag. Um, but let's buy some carrots just so that I can that the public the free delivery and the free shipping method. So we'll just do this. 
I'm just getting this down here. There you go. You can see they don't see the free delivery just as it should be. Let me log out. And I'm going to log in with one of the tagged identities. So this would be if I was a customer or a member now. Go to the same shop. And you kind of need to do this to check yourself because it's very easy to miss a step and, and make a mistake. Before your shop goes live, you need to check. Okay, so I'm seeing members only, which is a good sign. And let's buy some carrots. See, I'm seeing the five kilogram bag of carrots here. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna check out, and this time what I'll do, I'll just scroll down. See, so you can see, now I see the option for free, and I see the option for free. Just like with the shop, I see both things. And that's because I can't tag this one on anyone because it's a public shop. And so I don't know who the customer is going to be. If you knew all your customers, you can do tagging so that each person sees their specific thing. In this example, I don't know who my customers will be. Okay, I'm just going to log out because I want to keep showing you the consistent login. I'm going back as the shop owner now. Do you hear that? I have a keyboard that the yes doesn't work. You think I could get that fixed? It's going to drive you all crazy. Or change my name so it doesn't have an S. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going into my shop. Our next thing that we want to do is we have this group of gleaners. We want only the gleaners to see the carrots. Let's start by setting up that tag rule. It's a new tag rule. And it's on variants, which is products. So inventory variants call, I'm just going to call it gleaners. Inventory variants tagged cleaners are not visible. So nobody's going to see whatever I tag is cleaner. This time I need to add a new tag for new customers. Customers tagged as cleaners. Why? Because it's not just my members group. I can't just put it in this list. I have to start a new list. So for customers tagged gleamer, cleaners, I'm adding a new rule. Variants tagged gleaners are visible. Now you'll notice something. Up here, when I did the members, I had the members group, but I had different words for each of the things I'm tagging. I didn't just put members. And that's because that would be confusing, wouldn't it? Because I'm tagging different things to members. With gleaners, I've put it all as gleaners, gleaners, gleaners because this is the only thing I'm going to tag to this group. And if that changes, I'll, I'll change the tags. But it's quicker if you're only tagging one thing to one group, you could just keep the same word and then um, you're less likely to forget. Okay, so read through. Um, inventory variants products tagged as gleaners are not visible. But for customers tagged as gleaners, inventory products tagged as gleaners are visible. Notice this, inventory products. So now, let's tag our customers. Because so far, we don't have a group of gleaners. We have members. So maybe this member is a gleaner. Notice this. It's white on blue, because this tag isn't completed yet, because I still haven't tagged the products or the variants, right? So it's not showing up as completed yet. And let's tag this person as gleaners. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just about what I remember. Okay, so that's tagged as gleaners too. I'm going to save those changes. So I've set up my rules. I've set up my new customer group, the gleaners. Now I have to tag that five kilogram bag of carrots. Where is that? So you look into your product list. 
But then you say to me, oh my goodness, I don't see any place to put a tag here. Oh my goodness, she must be wrong. There's no place to put a tag. Don't get caught up here. You can't tag on a product list. You have to tag in your inventory. And now you're gonna say, what's that? And you're gonna have to watch another video on inventory, everything you wanted to know. Okay, in my inventory, you can see the carrots, five kilogram bag of carrots is here. And you get, again, you say to me, I don't see a place to tag. When you don't see something, check what's hidden. Tags was hidden. And that is a default, so I don't get caught on that again. And here it is tagged. It's tagged because I um, probably did a dry run of this before and tagged it, but I haven't completed the tag. So I'm just going to re-tag it so you see. You go to the product. I'm tagging as gleaners. There we go. I'm going to say changes. And this is where we're going to check in the shop. But just before we do, let's just triple check. So it's tagged in the product list as leaders. It's tagged in my customers as cleaners. Cleaners down here, cleaners and cleaners. I hope this works. So right now I'm logged in as a non-member and a non-gleaner. So when I go to the shop, if I see the carrots, I know I made a mistake. And you will laugh. And I will be embarrassed. Look at that. No laughter here. The five kilogram carrots are gone. So now, let's just conclude by checking I'm going to log in as one of the gleaners. Oh, sorry. Got a little rattled. I was so proud of myself. So I'm going to go to the shop. And what will I see? Wait for it. Now I'm logged in as someone who is members only and a gleaner. So this is good. And there's the five kilograms. So nobody else would have seen this except someone who's tagged as a gleaner and someone who's tagged as a member and a gleaner, of course. I'm going to stop there and I want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope that I can help you further. Thank you.